Hi, I'm Tiffany. Today, I'm going to show you how to solve for the greatest common factor. Greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is the largest factor that any two or more numbers have in common. Two possible ways to solve for the greatest common factor are by listing the factors, also by using prime factorization. Let's jump into example number one so I can show you how to solve by listing the factors. Example number one, we have 10 and 15. The factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. The factors of 15 are 1, 3, 5, and 15. If you're not so familiar with how to list factors, you need to check out my factors and multiples video. In it, I go in a lot of detail of how to solve for factors. That's really a lesson in itself, so for this particular video, I'm going to assume that you know already how to do that particular skill. If you don't know how to solve for factors, you need to go watch that video. Okay, after the factors are listed, we are finding the factor that is the greatest that the two numbers have in common. And it looks like that is 5. The greatest common factor of 10 and 15 is 5. Why is it not 1? They had 1 in common because we are looking for the greatest common factor. That means the largest number that the two numbers have in common. And in this case, 5 is the largest number that the two have in common. Let's move on to example number 2. Example number 2, we have 100 and we have 120. We're going to have a lot of factors to list. Factors of 100, 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25, 50, and 100. The factors of 120 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15, 20, 24, 40, 60, and 120. The factor that they have that is in common, that is the largest or the greatest, is 20. I like to circle that number again. How did I know it's 20? I literally just looked through the numbers. I like to start on my largest side. If I start on my smallest side, I'm going to run into several factors that they have in common, but they may not be the greatest common factor because we started on the side with the lower numbers, like the 1's in common, the 2's in common, the 4's in common, the 5's in common, and so on. So you, you're going to run into a lot of common factors when you start on the small end. So if you start on the large end, you're going to get the very first number that you see that they have in common and that's going to be it. So I like to start with the largest number, let's say 120 and I look on my other row, do I have any 120's over here? Nope. Do I have any 60's over here in my column for my 100 factors? No. Do I have any 40's? Nope. 24's? Nope. 20's? Yes. It's the first one I have in common so that means it's the greatest common factor. Let's move on to example number 3. We have 60 and 96. The factors of 60 are listed here. The factors of 96 are listed here. Again, like I said, let's start from the end. Let's get the greatest number and see if it's in the other row. Um, it does not matter which side you start with. You could start with your smallest um, number, which out of the two numbers, we have 60 or 96. So 60 would be the the smaller of the two original numbers but you still start on the side where the numbers are the largest so I'm gonna start with the 60 and I'm gonna look on this row to see if I have any 60s here's 60 no I don't have any 60s here's 30 no I don't have any 30 here's 20 no 20 15 nope 12 yes 12 is our greatest common factor the greatest common factor between 60 and 96 is 12 now let's try something a little different. Let's solve using prime factorization. And I do want to point out something. Greatest common factor and least common multiple are very similar. People get these mixed up a lot. We are right now solving for the greatest common factor. That means we are listing the factors or in determining what we need to do from those numbers, from the factors. When you solve for the least common multiple, you list the multiples and you determine what you're going to do from the list of multiples, okay? Although the setup may look very similar. You can use prime factorization to solve for both. I know a lot of times students get mixed up 
and they're not sure if they're solving for the steps for greatest common factor or least common multiple. So you do want to be mindful of what you're doing. We start with prime factorization of our numbers. Um, I'm not going into detail of how to explain this here. Again, I have a prime factorization video that you may need to check out if you're not sure how to do that. Prime factorization is a skill within itself. So, if you start with 15 and you find the prime factorization of 15, you end up with 3 times 5. 75, you end up with 3 times 5 times 5. And 105, you end up with 3 times 5 times 7. I need a little more space here, so I'm going to just move this set of numbers up to the top of my next page. Now, I'm going to take these numbers and I'm going to list them. And I'm going to put their answer out to the right. Okay? These answers here, the numbers in their prime factorization form is the most important part of this whole thing. Let me show you what I'm going to do. For the greatest common factor, I need to pull out numbers that are in each of these numbers. I can see that I have a 3 with my 15, a 3 with my 75, and a 3 with my 105. So I'm going to circle all of these numbers and they are going to be grouped. That's going to be one group. I also have fives. I have a five in my 15, a five in my 75, and a five in my 105. I have another five, but I have nothing to group it with. I must be able to group a number with all of the numbers that we are considering. In this case, we have three numbers. If there were only two numbers that had a five, I could not group those either. The group can only be made up of numbers that come from all three positions. The 7 also cannot be grouped because there's nothing else to group it with. So I pull out my numbers. I wrote down 1, 3 because I have a group of 3. And I wrote down 1, 5 because I have a group of 5. Then I multiply those numbers together and I get 15. That's how you solve for the greatest common factor using prime factorization. All of your group becomes just one of that number. All of the other group becomes one of that number. And then you multiply together. It's possible to have more groups. And that would just give you more numbers to multiply together at the end. Which is not a problem at all. Let's solve example number 5 the same way. Example number 5. I have 84, 140, and 196. We're using prime factorization, so that means we're going to find the prime factorization of the three numbers. For a little more space, I've written my numbers up at the top of this page and, again, listed the answers out to the side. Again, we need a group. Looks like we're going to have a group of twos here. And then we have another group of twos. Is it possible to have more than one group? Sure is. Um, and the only other thing it looks like we have is a group of sevens. The three doesn't have any other threes to go with. The five has no other fives and the seven has no other sevens. And again, like I said before, it wouldn't be enough to just have one other five in maybe this 84 or something. You would have to have it in all three numbers or all of the numbers you're considering. Even if you were finding the greatest common factor of a set of four numbers. The number needs to be listed in every single number that you have. So all of these numbers get pulled out. I have a group of twos, a group of two again, and a group of seven. So those get multiplied together, two times two times seven, and we end with 28. The greatest common factor between 84, 140, 196 is 28. So just a note that I want to point out to you, it's your choice whether you want to list the factors or use prime factorization to find the greatest common factor of any numbers. Solving either way will get you the exact same answer. I prefer to use prime factorization when I have larger numbers or I have more than two numbers that I want to find the greatest common factor for. But there is no right or wrong way to get a correct answer. Be sure not to confuse the steps for solving for greatest common factor with the steps for solving for least common multiple. They look very similar, but they do have minor differences. If you get confused between the two, go check out the least common multiple video to make sure you understand the things that are happening that are different. That's the end of my video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, 
Don't forget to click like, then head over to supereasymath.com for more math tutorials, printable video notes, worksheets, and more.